Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Wednesday, November 4th, 2020. And was that not a long night? We're taking a look at probably one of the closest elections that we've seen throughout modern history. Now, Joe Biden won the state of Arizona last night, and he is on track to win the states of Wisconsin and Michigan and Nevada. If this holds, Joe Biden wins the presidency. However, Donald Trump is counting on either going through the route of the Supreme Court or possibly winning uh, one of those battleground states, Wisconsin or Michigan or even Nevada, and end up winning the election. Before we get into this video, I want to briefly discuss my election prediction from yesterday because I know I've seen a lot of comments. This was wrong. I'm not going to deny that. Um, you know, when we look at this data that was given to us prior to the election, I understand many of you guys were very apprehensive about polling data, but the entire, uh, you know, entirety of the, the polling firms across this country have lost so much credibility. Now, I know some of you guys may think, you know, yes, I gave you this prediction and it was wrong. I acknowledge that. And I think that moving forward, there are a couple more factors we need to take a look at. And there were some miscalculations, not only on the behalf of my part, uh, but on the behalf of campaigns. The Biden and Trump campaign uh, campaigns both went into this very confident. Donald Trump was expecting to do well in certain states. The Biden campaign was expecting to do well in others. And I said in this video, you can go ahead and find it. It's around the near end where I say, take out these tilt states. And I'm very solid with the rest of these states. The tilt states are where, you know, they really co could go either way. And I do think that I did overestimate the amount of support that Joe Biden would be receiving in Texas. While it's closer than 2016, it's not as close as it was in 2018. And also this year, is uh, I, I believe the GOP has received 26% of the non-white vote. That is the highest it's been since 1960. So I just wanted to put that out there. Uh, a lot of things were wrong. There are a number of pundits out there who get paid half a million a year who got it more wrong than me, okay? Um, and I'm not denying that this map was flawed, but we still don't have a call in North Carolina or Georgia, uh, and we don't have a call in the Rust Belt yet, but we do have Arizona. And when we're looking at the results, I think that Joe Biden's campaign should be optimistic, but not too solid. Again, this election has proven to be much closer than we previously thought. And, you know, all of these states, when adjusted by the margin of error, they were going to probably end up being a little bit more solid for Donald Trump if they skewed the same way they did in 2016. That was the main purpose of a number of my videos where I discussed if the polls were as wrong as they were four years ago, does Donald Trump win the election? And the answer back then was no. And we've seen the polls skew even more so than 2016. But once we see the mail-in ballots coming out of Wisconsin today, I don't want to give you a false sense of hope if you're in the Biden campaign. But I do want you to take a look at the data and draw your own conclusion. I do want you to take a look at Milwaukee around this area where we see, you know, a number of Democratic votes. And, you know, you're saying, wait a minute, Donald Trump and Joe Biden already got their fair share of votes. But then you also have to realize that there's a number of outstanding mail-in ballots and joe biden's lead oh it's not going to pop back up for me okay um has expanded to larger than you know donald trump's in 2016 um when we're talking about the percentages 0.5 is that number you're going to be taking a look at if you are in the biden campaign because that is the automatic recount territory now it's very possible the trump campaign pays for a recount absolutely but not much changed in 2016 i think 133 votes changed and looking across the country these are outstanding counties okay kenosha county which sure is heavy for uh, Donald Trump, but we have, you know, city absentee ballots, which urban areas always lean towards the Democrats. That hasn't changed this time. Um, and the mail-in ballots always lean towards the Democrats in this election. So honestly, there actually isn't that much of the outstanding vote that is going to hurt Joe Biden or really help Donald Trump. We've pretty much hit the most uh, amount of votes. Joe Biden has already received the most votes out of any candidate in Wisconsin history. So while he's only narrowly winning, it's going to be very difficult for the GOP to catch up. But again, draw your own conclusions. If you don't want to rely on me because you may not be initially trusting in my analysis following that prediction, I understand that. But I do want you to take a look at the numbers yourself. Go to theguardian.com, go to the New York Times, go to Fox News, CNN, MSNBC. Look for these states, look at the counties, and then look at the absentee ballots out in major cities. That's where you're going to start to see Joe Biden's lead possibly increase. But it gets a little bit better for Biden in Wisconsin. Now, we're going to talk about states where I think that Donald Trump is doing better than I expected. Obviously, I characterize North Carolina and Georgia and Florida as Democratic states, one of which has already been called for Donald Trump, and that is the state of Florida. We'll talk about that uh, in another video to talk about what actually went wrong with my prediction, what went wrong with a number of other people's predictions. We're talking Nate Silver. ABC News, Sabato Crystal Ball, regardless of where you look, a lot of the data was, you know, flawed, first of all. I don't know what they did. They've had four years to fix themselves and they've gotten even worse. But um, again, 
that's not the main purpose of this video. So take a look at the outstanding ballots in Wisconsin. Right now, Joe Biden has a lead with only 62% of the ballots cast uh, being counted in Wayne County, Michigan. This is a county that is very solid for Joe Biden. The election day vote has Biden up 67%, and all we have left are mail-in votes. And Wisconsin is probably going to go to Biden. Even if Trump wins the election, we're probably going to see Biden carry the state of Michigan. You know, looking at the overall map itself, Biden is ahead in Wisconsin, he's ahead in Michigan, and he's ahead in Nevada. But Michigan, like I said, draw your own conclusions. There are still some outstanding Republican counties, but take a look at how few votes there are. 8,000 for Trump, 7,000 for Trump, 2,000 for Trump, and then in Detroit, sure, 194,000 for Trump, that sounds good, but 414,000 for Biden sounds even better for their camp. So when you see how many votes are out in Wayne County, you know, there are still some other areas. Oakland County, you need to take a look at that because suburbs outside of Detroit, uh, Ingham County with Lansing, another major city. Uh, again, take a look at the outstanding vote, and then you take a look at uh, Kent County, which is Republican. But again, election day vote has been counted. They are now getting into mail-in ballots, which would definitely help Joe Biden if it's on track to do uh, as well as it previously had. Uh, so with Wisconsin and Michigan, where does that put Joe Biden on the race to do 70? He's already won Arizona. So this puts him actually six shy away from winning the presidency. That's your little, you know, pathway to 270 if we were to be exact. Nevada would be the state that puts Joe Biden over the top. When you look at Nevada, you see that with 67% of the votes counted, Joe Biden only has a narrow lead. But again, mail-in ballots. We probably won't know the results till noon tomorrow. That is because the state of Nevada has said we will not be releasing any new results until noon on Thursday, November 6th. Or November, what, 5th? So wait for that day. Wait for Nevada to come in. The election day vote didn't favor Trump as much as it should be. But again, draw your own conclusions. I'm not going to be the one to tell you who is winning this election if you don't want to trust me. If you do want to trust me, I think that Biden is doing very well. Things could go awry. But I think that right now, Joe Biden could rely on the mail-in vote in Nevada, could rely on it in Wisconsin and Michigan. But the one state I think a lot of Democrats are very worried about is Pennsylvania. Take a look at this margin of victory for Donald Trump over Joe Biden. The race has not been called. The race has not been counted because over a million votes are outstanding. But Donald Trump has a roughly 500,000 vote lead, a half a million vote lead over Joe Biden in this battleground state. Not many of us could have projected it. I characterized it as lean. If we are following uh, the election where Joe Biden actually does win the state of Pennsylvania, it will move into the lean column. It's not going to be tilt just because of how many outstanding votes there are. And it's supposed to split the same way the rest of the mail-in votes have, especially from the major cities. Uh, but Democrats should worry about Pennsylvania. Now, they don't need Pennsylvania, as I showed you, through Nevada, through Wisconsin, through Michigan. But Wisconsin probably won't be likely. Michigan probably won't be likely. But they will be lean states. They're not going to be uh, as close as they were in 2016, at least. Um, if the mail-in ballots do end up favoring Joe Biden, the same way the Biden camp has said today. The Biden camp has said that they will win the election. That is not something the Clinton campaign said. They said, you can wait a little longer. You can wait a little longer. You've been waiting, you know, forever. You can wait a little longer. The Biden campaign comes into this a little bit more confident. And when you're looking at North Carolina, you start to wonder, why has this state not been called? Well, again, absentee ballots. There are a number of ballots that are coming in till the 12th, I believe, in North Carolina. So as long as they're a postmark by Election Day, it can come in and be counted. Now, the question remains, will there be enough votes by the 12th that's able to push Joe Biden over the top? And right now he's down... 1.3%, 1.4%, which is better than where Hillary Clinton was. But again, a loss is a loss. A lot of Democrats are going to start asking themselves, why did they not do well in North Carolina? I had it as tilt. When I say tilt, I say it could go either way. All of my other predictions were correct, except for this region, literally except for this region, just because, you know, I overestimated Latino support for Democrats in Florida. Georgia is absolutely in play. North Carolina is slightly less in play, but it still has yet to be called. And then looking at Georgia, I think Democrats are a little bit more optimistic because take a look over here. We have some outstanding votes. Now, it looks like a lot of the vote has been counted, but there's a lot, a lot of outstanding absentee ballots. Um, a lot of the Election Day vote has already been counted across this state. Uh, it looks like it's going to be holding for the GOP. A lot would have to work in favor of Joe Biden if he is to win Georgia. But, but the point is, you know, draw your own conclusions. But if you do the electoral math yourself, 
Biden technically could win with Wisconsin, Michigan, and Nevada. But that honestly would probably be the most, the weirdest map we could possibly see. Maybe uh, a weirder version would be with Georgia going blue. But I do want to point out, you know, I acknowledge that this prediction, sure, has been proven wrong in Florida. But everything else has been right so far. And when we're looking at North Carolina and Georgia and Pennsylvania, states that have not been yet called, I am confident that Biden will do well in Pennsylvania. I don't know if it'll be enough to win. It's not going to be a blowout with Trump winning the state by 10 points. Uh, but again, I am not here to serve as your you know, sense of hope towards the election because I am not a campaign official. I am not someone who sees the insider data. So they probably have a much better idea than I do. But the Biden campaign has been pretty confident that Wisconsin and Michigan will be called this evening for uh, the, that will be called this evening for Joe Biden. And if that holds true, and tomorrow at noon, Nevada reports and the Democrats are ahead, we might see a projection for uh, Joe Biden because Nebraska's second district has gone to Biden, which means it's not 269, it's 270. And yes, this election is shaped up to be something that we really didn't expect. Yes, it has gotten significantly closer than what the data suggested. But the question still remains, can Donald Trump win this election? And the answer is yes. But when you're looking at the outstanding ballots in Wisconsin and Michigan, and like I said, get your own, uh, you know, look at the results and then paint your own picture. Because right now, this election can absolutely go either way. We have millions of votes out across the country, 8 million votes at least expected to be counted by uh, the end of the election season, 8 million more. And I believe Biden is about to hit 70 million in the popular vote, 69.7. He's already passed Obama 2008. Um, he is doing very well in the popular vote, but so is Donald Trump. Donald Trump has received the most votes of any Republican candidate in United States history. So keep that in mind when you're drawing your own conclusions. I just wanted to update you guys on the electoral map. No, the race is not over yet, and the markets know it all too well. This race has been changing very, very quickly, but it looks like the only states that people are really solid on are Wisconsin, Michigan, Arizona, and Nevada. Surprisingly enough, you know, this is a prediction that I made a couple months ago. I didn't think it would hold just because the data got a lot better for Joe Biden. But I think that this is really this election specifically is going to delegitimize a lot of um, a lot of polling firms, and it doesn't look like even the Republican internals got some of these states correctly. Um, Trafalgar Group did not get Wisconsin or Michigan correctly as it stands right now. Um, Florida, according to Real Clear Politics, which got it right four years ago, got it wrong this time. So a lot of these news sources, it's really weird. It's really weird to me. Got it wrong, and I am acknowledging that this map will not be the result on election day. This will not be the result. Well, obviously it's past election day, but this will not be the result. But the election is probably not close to over. It may be called tonight. The Biden campaign is expecting to be projected the winner around noon tomorrow when Nevada is called. Um, Pennsylvania still has over a million votes to count over 1 million. So the race is 100% in play. Joe Biden and Donald Trump are probably going to be facing off in the closest election in modern history. And I know if you were you know, around for the Gore, uh, Bush v. Gore election, that sounds really, really daunting. And that's the very unfortunate reality about this election night is that we do not have a clear winner late into the morning the next day. And we probably won't until late into the morning tomorrow. So I just wanted to end it off by saying I will update you guys tonight. I do want to briefly discuss um, how... Donald Trump and Joe Biden could get to 270 with the remaining slash outstanding states. Uh, it's going to be very difficult for both sides. This is a benefit fight that the Democratic Party has been fighting for the past four years. And while all the data indicated that we could be within the margin of error of a landslide, we were also within the margin, error, uh, margin of error of a very close election. And it looks like the latter was the scenario. So I send you off with the best wishes. I hope you guys don't stress out too much. I understand there is a lot at stake on both sides, but the election results will probably pour in in a couple of hours. You can probably take a break from looking at the New York Times needle or looking at the uh, projections or watching your news source. Take a break. This election has been practically going on for four years and we still have a lot to see. It could still go either way, but I do want to point out 
that the election doesn't look as nearly as bad for Joe Biden as it did last night. Last night, Biden was down in Wisconsin and Michigan, sometimes by double digits. You know, Trump was obliterating Biden in Georgia. It has since narrowed up. So just take a look at these states. Take a look at them. Uh, look at the counties that are out. Look at the mail-in ballots that are out. Draw your own conclusions. Draw your own conclusions. And I think you'll arrive the same one at the same one as my own. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. I'm not going to recommend that you watch another video. Literally, like I said, take a break. You don't need to click on the playlist. It's just going to be there because my end screen automatically pops up at the end of every video. Um, it doesn't look like we're going to be entering into 2022 or 2024 in the near future. This election might be drawn out for a little bit longer. Again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all later today.